let's talk a little bit about uh, 073, and then we can talk about your impressions of it. Anybody, has anybody worked with 073 students yet? Anybody? Oh, yeah, you have? Okay. Okay, so uh, I realize that perhaps we haven't done a good job of telling you what 073 is, and I'm not going to pull up the PowerPoint slide because it, uh, I'm just going to tell you about it. It'll take too long. But 073 is intermediate algebra with applications. And so uh, does anybody tutor 111 a lot in here? You get a lot of 111 students? How about 153 students? Okay. Um, if you do, then let me just ask you this. And I'm, I'm not picking on David, but Lydia, okay, right? What, um, what do you think a student needs mathematically to be successful in a Math 111 class? Like, do you, I mean, what are some things that would be useful? Do you, I mean, I'm putting you on the spot, but is there something that comes to mind from previous classes? Like, what do you think what the follow through might be? And I, I assume that all of you are pretty, pretty used to, I mean, pretty comfortable with what is in 083, right? Pretty, you, you understand what, what's, what's involved in 083. Probably a two to that more than anything else, 083. But Lydia, what do you think? That's what we noticed. That's what we noticed. Yet, 083 was a prerequisite for 111. The same thing is true of 153. I've taught all of those. I've taught 153 for a long time, 111 for a long time, and 083 for a long time. And it just didn't seem to make sense that a student had to complete the square. And I use that just because that's the one that students have trouble with a lot. Or factor something, you know, factor a trinomial whose leading coefficient is, uh, you know, something other than one. Yet they never use those skills in 111 and 153. Now, I believe as a mathematician that the reason that they have to pass 083 is not so that they can apply what they've learned in 083. It's to, it's to guarantee a, a certain level of mathematical sophistication before they move on to college credit. That's my belief. However, I think certain students uh, need a more practical approach to their mathematical direction. What I mean by that is they need to understand how, the, how it's going to apply. Okay? And, and I, I, I would like it to be that I tell you that it's important and you do it. Like, that's the way it was for me. Somebody told me this was important, I just did it. And I didn't say, why do I need to know this? Right? So, uh, so there, we decided that with all these problems, the problem being, you know, if you passed 083, it didn't necessarily make, prepare you well for 111 and 153 because there are a lot of projects there. It's a whole different kind of math. So what would we do? What, what, if we could design a course that, that would be a prerequisite for 111 and 153, what would we want to be in that course? What would we want the students to be able to do? Well, we need some mathematical sophistication. We need them to be able to do some sort of projects because most people have a lot of projects in STAT and, and a lot of projects in Math 111. And so, um, and, and it's not necessarily important for a student to be able to pass big whopping tests the way they have to in, in 083, the bit, pass the big final, right, the big departmental final. So what we did was we said, okay, well, uh, let's do a project-based course that still has serious mathematics in it and try to tie the two up. And I'm going to show you the syllabus. This was already up, so it'll take a second for us to get it back up because of the restart. But the syllabus says that 50% of your, your grade in 073 is going to be based on projects and labs. Labs are done in class, and some of them involve, you know, actually pouring water and, and, and measuring how long, how long it takes for the water, timing how long it takes for water to pour out of a bottle, and then making a, it turns out to be a quadratic progression based on that. And the students love that one. Uh, another one has to do with linear models because we found that students needed to be able to do, deal with lines before they went into both Math 111 and statistics because of the correlation in both of those courses. So they need to be able to know what y equals mx plus b is and for some reason they just don't remember that. They don't remember that. So we need them to be able to graph a line, right? So those are, those are some of the things that, that we added to Math 111. But, so we had four labs, that's 10% each. One comprehensive project, that's 10% of your grade, so that's 50% is non-test. 10% homework, usually we use homework quizzes, okay, quizzes based on the homework. And then 20% for a midterm, 20% for the final. The final is not cumulative, and the midterm is, of course, just the midterm of what you've done up to, to the midterm, and then the final is what you've done between the midterm and the final, okay. So that seemed to be a nice uh, approach to this. 
especially when the students uh, see that we're actually going to do some applied mathematics. Now, here's the problem. Does anybody know anything about applied mathematics? They're like, wait. Well, everybody says, I love applied mathematics. That's what we should do. All the other departments, they're talking about how we should be applying our mathematics. Does anybody know the problem with that? Does anybody, does anybody guess what the problem with applying all your mathematics? They only give you the formula. Real applied mathematics is tougher than, than moving X's around. I can teach anybody how to move X's around. That's easy. You just subtract x from both sides, move it over there, right? And then you're like, uh, you know, you just take the square to both sides, get rid of that x squared, uh, and plus or minus, that's fine. No, you can teach anybody that. Whether they understand what they're doing or not, I can still teach it to you, and, and I can kind of get you to pass the, the final exam if we've had enough time together, right? I know you believe this because you do it all the time. Whether they really understand the math, I'm not sure, but I can train them to do this. And, but... But to do applied problems, you really have to understand the math. You really have to understand what's going on, and you also have to not be afraid of ugly, ugly numbers. Because in applied problems, the numbers aren't plus or minus two, right? And the equations aren't nice quadratic equations. They are ugly, okay? And so we had to get around that idea because every, although everybody was saying it'll just be easy, the students will love it, it'll be easy, it won't be easy because it's hard to find a textbook that actually does applied math, yet is not too difficult that the students will run for the hills, right? And so the reason we chose this textbook is it's sort of like um, we got this idea from Fringe. All you have to do is put your fingers right on this, and the knowledge just goes right in your brain. Okay, so, and the students, they sure, it's expensive, but with that extra, no, I don't know why that's on there, who knows. Um, oh, it's the, it's the fingerprint stuff. I'm gonna pass this around. This is our textbook for 073, and I am gonna show you some of the different approaches we, we do uh, use with 073, I'm going to show you one of the labs. Originally, I said I was going to come in here with the water lab, but, uh, you know, there's something about carting water around everywhere that's just not, nobody ever is comfortable with that, right? And so I'd be I'd sloshing some water, and you'd be like, what's he doing with the water? You'd be really nervous. Okay, so uh, instead, we're going to just show you what the lab looks like. It is actually the uh, my favorite lab that we do. So. What I do is post all the labs so the students can comfortable with them. And you'll see that I've posted all the, um, you'll see what I mean about the notes. I've posted all the notes for this course. It is an algebra-based course, but for 073, a lot of students really need to go back and check their notes, okay? So I remember that, that thing I said, I, I don't do it for 083 and I don't do it for college algebra up through calculus or whatever I'm teaching because they need to come to class and they need to learn to take notes. For 073, I do post the notes. So for example, I don't know, notes from 3.0, or I always talk about factoring being the, your, the, the, my favorite F word I can use a lot in the math class. Um, and FOIL is my favorite four letter F word I can use in the math class. And one time I said that and I said, okay, what is your favorite four letter F word you can use in a math lad, uh, class? And this girl in the back shouted out, you know what she shouted out, right? <laughs> and she was like always dressed up and always with it, you know, and it was the last person in the whole class I expected to shout that out, but I had to laugh and laugh for five minutes, it was funny. Anyway, so that's why I always say, and um, so you know, we're factoring by grouping, so we're doing a lot of things, look like you, you know, like factoring is just un unfoiling, isn't it? So you do this all the time, look there's the X, there's the ACB method, you're our old friend, right? Anybody use the ACB method to, to help students, right? Otherwise, you know, the method that we learned, right, was just factor. <laughs> Somebody looked at me and said, what, you can't factor it? Just factor it, come on. You know, there's no method, you just figure out the numbers that work. What do you mean there's a method? Okay, so that's what we do. It's, that looks like 083, doesn't it? But what we've done is we've taken a little bit of 083 out and then added some other things like exponential growth, which is really a 165 topic the way we teach it. Now we don't teach it on the level of 165, but in 083, Exponential equations are of the forms, anybody know what, in 083, they're always of a certain form. I don't know if you've noticed this. The few exponential equations they get, it's always a function of the form f of x equals uh, b to the x, okay? There's never an a, there's never initial value. Well, we teach it with initial value because that's what you need for applied problems, okay? That's what you need, and so that is, everybody says, why are you making, uh, why are you making 083 easier by teaching 073. It's not easier, it's just different. The grading is different, but the, but the actual content is about the same, and, and we add a few things and take a few things out that they'll never have to worry about again. 
Now again, does this address the problem of, boy, I lost my uh, website here. Um, does this address the problem of, you know, they'll never have to be able to factor again in those other courses? No, it doesn't. But it still makes sure that they have a certain mathematical sophistication. That's my argument. I don't want to take away everything. We're not going to just teach them exactly what they need for 111 and, and 153. Why? Because that's not the kind of student you want to have go out into the workforce. I'm telling you. And that's what the students think. They're like, just tell me what I need to know. Forget all this other stuff. Why do I need to know this? Well, you need to know this because your brain is like a big muscle. And the more you work it, the better off you are. And eventually, somebody's going to pay you for that brain. So let's make sure it's good. And one way we can test your brain or train your brain is using these tricks of mathematics, right? With specific rules and, and really uh, specific definitions that we have to follow to the letter, right? You take this, this is the setup right here. What a cool diagram. Okay, so you've got masking tape down the, the bottle, okay, two liter bottle, and you have a drain hole here, and you measure where you start, and every five seconds, you mark where the water level is, okay, until it drains completely. Then you take the masking tape off and take a ruler, and then you make a graph based on the height of the water from the hole, right, over time. And that's going to be part of a quadratic, okay? Does anybody know why that wouldn't be exponential? I had a lot of people say, like a lot of the math press are like, that should be exponential. Anybody know why that isn't? What, what makes something exponential? Have you guys thought about this? This is something mathematicians think about all the time. I woke up last night thinking about this. Not really. <laughs> um, what makes something exponential? Think about what, what does exponential growth really model? Give me the classic example of what exponential growth Population. So you got you got these bacteria in a petri dish, and they start reproducing, and suddenly they double every you know. Let's let's like scary every hour they double. Oh, uh, it's like scary. I've seen that movie. And uh, so suddenly, what? But what makes it exponential is that once one bacteria is reproduced, it gets to reproduce again, right? It's not a linear. It's not like tag where the bacteria says, Ah, you're in. I reproduce, and then you get to go on, and only one person gets to do. That would be linear, right? But this exponential idea is that everybody gets to reproduce right after they've reproduced. And so it's like a rumor. A rumor also, a rumor around campus. I'm sure you've seen that problem in 165 and 163 textbook. Uh, the textbook we used to do said it would have this model of, exponential model of a rumor spreading around campus. Well, if I tell David a rumor, and I've, I've told him some rumors before, but, uh, and then he tells, uh, what, the great thing is I get to keep telling the rumor, right? And then he gets to tell the rumor to as many people as he wants, and I'm still telling the rumor. And then all the people he tells get to tell, gets to tell whoever they want. That's what makes something exponential. It's, no, it's not exponential, right? Everybody's lining up to go out of, this, out of this hole, the drain hole. It's not like everybody's hitting everybody else and making everybody go that much faster. Okay? That's not why it's going. That's not why there's the motion. So it's a part of a quad quadratic, and the students get to graph that. And then they do this little... Then they do a table, right? And then they make a graph. And then they answer some r really abstract questions about it. And then they get to take this lab, this part home, and do on their own to turn in later, okay, a week later. And what it, it gives you, it gives them some other data that's not their own, it's just fixed data. And they have to go on Microsoft um, Excel and create a plot, okay, that looks like this. And all the directions are here. And guess what? When the student says, I don't know how to use Microsoft Excel, I'm not allowed to help you. Okay? Part of the lab is that the, instru the instructions are right here. Every instru I mean, click by click. Part of mathematics is teaching you how to do things. You know? You've got to be able to follow directions and do things. And pretty much that's, a, that's one of the reasons education is important, right? I've got to teach you how to do something. And this. They have to figure it out on their own. And I've never had a student who actually sat down to read it who said, yeah, it was impossible to do, right? Unless they had a different version of Excel or they're using this computer we have in here, who knows. Um, and uh, so if they come to ask you for help, I don't know, if, has anybody seen somebody come in and ask for help on any of these? I'll see, the other one I get is, well, I don't have Excel. Well, every computer in the whole college has Excel. So just go to one and then work on it for a little bit, right? 
So in, in many ways, we're, we're, we're actually making them do more stuff themselves than we do in 083, because in Math 111, they're a little bit more on their own. Uh, in Math 153, it's a lot on their own because of how much material they have to cover in Math 153, if it's done right. Okay. Good. Anybody have any questions on the labs or anything? 073?